getting ready to start doing some owl hooting and coyote howling. Trying to roost some birds for me and my buddy Garrett Prawl. He's got the YouTube channel DIY Sportsman. He's going to meet me down here tonight. He had to work today, so he couldn't get down here for roost, roosting time. It's probably about 10 minutes past sunset, so they should be getting in the tree here soon. There's no leaves on the tree, which normally is starting to green up a little more by now. But it's been a cold, windy spring, colder than usual, it seems like. I sure could go for some warm days, but we're not going to get that here in Iowa either. As long as it doesn't rain, I'll be okay. We say we see, see if we can get one to gobble. That's a gobble. I bet it's coming around the curve. Let's go that way. Bird just gobbled right there, right above me. Well, that's a good, good, mature gobble. Now let's see if he's on public. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh crap, no he's not. That guy, he's coming down the He's got another one to gobble. He's way up here. Where is he at? I don't see anywhere for him to be. One thing I can think of is the one around the curve and I'm hearing the sound carry around. I'm gonna just drop a pin right here somewhere. may not be lost. I decided to walk over here just to confirm, try to confirm where this other bird was at. And a, another bird gobble. I got three birds gobbling along this line of ridges. And this one right here is real close to public. We can work with this one. I'm gonna drop a pin on the map and then I'm gonna go meet up with Garrett. All right, good morning. Got my buddy Garrett Prowl. He met up with me last night. After he sent me in here to work for him and roost gobblers. Anyway, I got one roosted on the top of the hill. We got to walk down the road a little ways. We got to discussing it last night and Garrett mentioned that, uh, or reminded me that last year when I was out here roosting birds, I had video of one that looked like a multiple bearded bird. And he kept roosting on this point right next to private. And we never targeted him. Well, we this bird is roosted in the same spot so possibly could be him maybe he survived last year but anyway he's roosted right on the edge of private so we're gonna climb up the hill we're gonna stay back from the line about 40 or 50 yards and try to call him you know side hill and try to get him to stay in the woods if he flies down to the field then we're in trouble because that's private but we'll give him a go and then if we can't do anything with him then we'll head off to find other birds but it's a pretty simple strategy. It's a big hill. He's roosted kind of like in the corner where the woods wrap around the field a little bit. And we're just gonna go straight up the hill and it starts to taper off at near the top and about 40 to 50 yards from the edge of the field. We're gonna set up and then hopefully just have him pitched down. We're gonna be about 100 yards or so from the bird and uh, hopefully it comes right into our column. That's pretty much it. Any, any words? Nope, looking forward to it. First time of the year. I so say good luck to myself. From where I had a bend. You had the bend. Yeah, listen, well, obviously we need to move closer. But I don't want to. I don't want to lose the advantage of the terrain. If it starts to drop off too much, then we just stop. Yeah, that's an idea. We got some fresh turkey scratching. You guys can't see it in the night camera, but it's just enough ambient light. There's fresh scratching off the air. Anyway, let's slide forward real slow down. Kind of stay at this uh, at this point in the hill. Yeah. This elevation. Yeah, this yeah, elevation. elevation. Start wrapping around. Yeah. Looks like it rolls up pretty steep right up here, but we're still quite a ways away from that bird. I don't want 
want to get to where this drops off like that. See these double oaks right here in front of us? Maybe the lower oak there. Okay, so we can find a bigger one, but this might work. Yeah, especially if he, if he comes up right underneath that field edge. Cause there's not really a bench right here. The flat spot, it seems like it's probably gonna be up there. You think we should hang back a little bit to kind of draw him into the woods? Cause he, yeah, if we set up here. I could see him, I could see him getting down on this hillside and then using that little funnel come up to the field, you know? Yeah. I'm worried that if we get up too high and he comes up, he just sits in gobbles and struts right up the field edge, which is going to be about 50 yards, 50, 55 yards away. I was saying about this spot, is, as soon as he crests up over it, like, yeah, in here, is easy range. Yeah. All right, let's, let's just ease up this tree and just see what it looks like from that spot. There's enough ambient light out here where we can see, but it's still dark enough. Turkey can't see us. right straight down below us. Oh, so we should turn your head and listen. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's below us. How did that... How did that happen? I don't know. But you need, yeah, you need to get... Yeah, you need to get where I'm at. How did I miss that? Actually, I'm going to try to the sound that to the lab. Jake is.
you see him? You see him? No, I'm asking you. No, but I hear the bunch of steps going on here. Yeah, the drama's definitely getting closer. He's pretty thick bearded. Yeah, he's got a rope on him. How about that, buddy? Gosh. He's not muscle bearded, but that one last year had a big fat rope like that. Yeah. Oh, he's got some good hooks, too. His drumming didn't sound that close, as close as he popped out at. I thought he was still farther down the hill. I can hear him. I can hear him pretty well. Once I heard the footsteps, I was like, okay, he's got to pop up right there. That's I got this good. little hat on. That's probably hurting my yeah. ear a little bit. If he's done flopping, you can lay him down. We get a tag on him because you know Iowa, how they are. Awesome, man. We finally did it. After seven years of hunting together, the last <laughs> one we killed together was like no 2000, 2015. Last last two times we hunt together, we grind our butts off for days at, days on days, and now we're done 15 minutes. <laughs> it wasn't it didn't work out exactly like I planned because I thought he was up here roosted, and he actually was roosted down here. And you can't see the road down there, but we we must have walked right on the other side of him going up, and we got above him. Which when he gobbled down below us, I. We both agreed that was ideal. Right, yeah. Number he knew one. He was going to do basically what he did. Yeah, number oh, one, he was um, down below us. We right. had the high ground. And number two is the privates behind us. Yeah, the private, but the privates behind us. So we had, we ran between him and the private and the fields up there. Yep. So Garrett's going to walk down where we think the bird was roosted. And I'm going down the route that we came up. I remember this fallen tree here. We wanted to get beyond it. Initially, we were going to set up up here somewhere and, and kind of because we thought we might be getting too close to the bird. I mean, if you look at it from where we're at right now down to where the, the dirt road is, where I that's still a long ways. Yeah. So I had to, the issue was I couldn't triangulate him. The thing is, too, when the sound comes even from here, it's coming over this this edge. And so yeah. from you down there, you can't tell. Well, if, if he's up in a tree, it's not coming over. It's coming directly at me. Right. I mean, I had a beat on. It's just trying to gauge the distance. Well, that's almost 200 yards or more to where he's at from where I was roosting or uh, hooting. So I just assumed he was up towards the end. But we lucked out because we came up way over here, past all these little rock outcroppings, and then we cut across, and we ended up being directly above him. Perfect. All right, let's get down to the car. So Garrett set up on the hill that he thought this bird was 20 and a half pounds. 20.5. I said 23. I got the scale zeroed out. Oh, 22 and a half. No, get your hand off the... You got it? Look at that, 23. Where's that at? 23 on the nose. <laughs> You're more practiced. Yeah, I got a little more experience holding gobblers, dead gobblers. All right, we're gonna go get this bird cleaned up or whatever we can legally do with it. Can we clean the bird? And I will. Sure we can verify. Yeah, we'll check the regs. Otherwise, we'll, we're gonna get out hunting here in a little bit and try to fill my tag. 